What are some of the things, uh, you know, if you could bring up some examples here, I know you guys have taken stances on, uh, on the overall proposal, but some individual items in there that you, you guys have really kind of uh, rallied around. Can, can you kind of give us some of those examples of, and, and break those down of what IAR is kind of doing and what the reason for doing those things is? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, for uh, just a few examples, um, in the original proposal, there was um, different sections. One example is um, with bed bugs. You know, that's not really an issue right now. Uh, it, well, maybe it'll always be an issue, but, you know, I think that it was really hard to grasp why that was a part of the conversation, just given where we are today. Um, but in a version that we saw, um, we really wanted to have a tenant notification of 48 hours. If a tenant no notices bed bug activities, notify the landlord right away because of, um, you know, just trying to get rid of that, you know, habitability standards. We want to make sure that there are clean environments and the longer you let it fester, the more likely it is it's going to spread to other units. And so um, the tenant groups and the bill sponsors said, all right, well, we'll, we'll make their, we'll make it a notification that tenants have five days, but um, landlords have 48 hours to recognize that they um, have received the request. And we just thought that that was so backwards to allow it, allow tenants to have five days to give that notification. So we were able to change it, 48 hour tenant notification. Um, that was a step in the positive direction. Um, we did get a couple of exemptions. So for owner occupied six units or less, um, they're exempt from the ordinance. Um, I think that the other piece that was really big and really important is um, a difference from Chicago's RLTO, which is um, the regulation of security deposits and the interest that has to be returned. This has provided um, some of the most contentious aspects of, of Chicago housing providers because if they make a simple clerical mistake when they return the interest of a security deposit, um, you know, they, they can get hit with um, steep fines. Um, a tenant could break the lease. You know, just just some ridiculous things for being off a few cents when returning the security de deposit. Um, so in the county's version, now um, it doesn't include the requirement that an interest be returned, but what it does include is different aspects of how the security deposit is handled, how um, the landlord must let the tenant know what um, financial institution it, that money is held. Um, and so what we were able to get, um, and I think that this is considered a small victory, is that um, if a tenant is trying to get out of their lease or you know, uh, they're working with an attorney that wants to just um, have a gotcha moment, a landlord has 48 hours to cure it. So if there's a simple clerical error or a simple administrative oversight, um, that landlord has 48 hours to fix it. Um, and I think that that's, that's a step in the right direction. Um, but ultimately we, we wanna continue to improve the language of the ordinance to get other things that you know, aren't, aren't as, um, you know, aren't as imbalanced as it was presented to us.